Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the radio show Newsbeat. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying AQA A-level media studies and this video in particular is going to focus on radio industries. So it's important to know a little bit of background information about the BBC to understand Newsbeat and how it fits into the radio industry. The BBC is a public service broadcaster, which means it gets its funding from the general public with licence fees that they pay each month or each year. Therefore, there is no advertising on any BBC radio station. Also means that their content has to have a kind of element of public service. So the BBC actually have a remit, which is to inform, to educate and to entertain. And so I suppose it's important to realise that Newsbeat as a programme is very much focused on that inform and educate part of that remit. Because they're funded by licence fees rather than advertisers, they don't have to um, bring in massive audiences to make advertisers happy. That means they can afford to take risks because their money is coming in from licence fees regardless of how many listeners they have. They can make programmes that perhaps are more niche and have smaller, more specific audiences than perhaps more mainstream commercial radio could. The BBC is also quite a large company, it's global, and it means that they have a reasonably uh, good reputation within both TV and radio. They have resources all over the world, they can afford to travel, uh, they have journalists stationed all over the world as well. So it means that they are able to gather and, and get resources for news reasonably easily. The first channel that it is broadcast on is BBC Radio 1. Um, BBC Radio 1 is a kind of popular music um, chart station during the day. And then at night time, it starts to play more alternative music. It's primarily targeting a reasonably young audience, so 15 to 30 year olds, maybe up to about 35 years of age. Um, and it also features not just music, but some documentaries and some interviews too. Part of BBC Radio 1's remit is that it has to provide some news content. And so that's one reason why Newsbeat appears as a radio um, broadcast on BBC Radio 1. BBC Radio 1 Extra um, is a digital radio station, so perhaps showing that digital convergent technologies are more popular for modern audiences now. And it tends to play slightly different music, perhaps aimed at a more urban black audience. Um, and so kind of trying to bring in a more diverse audience in terms of ethnicity there. It's also broadcast on BBC Asian Network, um, which again is targeted at an, an Asian audience primarily. Um, they used to have more bulletins of Newsbeat, but actually the, the number of bulletins on the BBC Asian Network has been kind of streamlined and slimmed down over the years. And I think that's to reflect the fact that the BBC have actually gone through some quite strict budget cuts. They've cut down a lot of staff. They've moved their um, main offices. Um, and so perhaps the streamlining and showing one or you know broadcasting one one news show across three channels reflects the fact that their um, operating costs have had to be quite restricted in the last few years. The scheduling of Newsbeat is carefully done to try and engage a reasonably young audience. So, um, for example, what there is one broadcast at 12.45, which I guess is when they think young people are going to be listening, maybe at lunchtime at school, um, but also potentially um, younger people uh, in their 20s and 30s who might be listening on their lunch breaks at work. The second time it's broadcast mainly is at 5.45pm and that reflects the time that a lot of young people are going to be finishing work, doing their homework or at home with the radio on. So using the scheduling to try and target particular audiences. There's less broadcasts at a weekend with a different schedule and I suppose that really reflects the idea that they know younger people are not going to be perhaps listening to the radio as much at the weekend. They're going to be off socialising, they're on a different timetable, you know, they're lying in later and going to bed later. So um, they actually changed the scheduling on the weekends to reflect that. Be all the BBC radio stations used to be based in London at Broadcasting House. And in the last few years, the, uh, the, most of the BBC offices have actually migrated up to Birmingham. And that is um, because it is cheaper up there to um, you know, hire staff and to have offices and overheads. And so it's part of their kind of budget cuts as a company and an organisation. And a lot of staff were forced to move up to Birmingham for this. Um, they actually lost a huge amount of staff, particularly in their radio stations. Um, and that is because if they move you out of London, they, have, they can pay you less because if you're living in London, they pay you more to reflect the increased cost of London living. Um, 
So a lot of people weren't happy with the idea that their salaries potentially were going to be cut and they were going to have to move miles and miles away from their families and friends. And they lost a huge amount of staff who refused to go. Newsbeat used to have its own section on the BBC website. So it used to have its own homepage and other specific content. And it also used to have its own app for audiences to be able to listen via the app. The BBC actually closed these down in order to save costs. So perhaps reflecting the fact that although many audiences are online now, the BBC are still suffering from a lot of budget cuts. The BBC radio um, kind of section on their website, you know, there is some content there, but it is quite minimal. And I think this probably reflects the fact that they know a lot of younger people are just really not visiting websites a lot at the moment. They tend to be focusing more of their time on social media. They post a lot on places like Twitter, YouTube and Instagram. And that reflects that rising trend of social media being very important to young modern audiences. If you miss a broadcast, you can catch up with it on BBC Sounds. So this idea that you can catch up at any time reflects the increasing popularity of audiences wanting content on demand and not really wanting to fit into a particular schedule. It also operates as a radio station on um, Virgin and Sky TV. So you can actually scroll through your channels and come across um, the BBC Radio One, BBC Radio One Extra and the BBC Asian Network. And therefore you can listen to Newsbeat via your TV as well. Another way that they're thinking of trying to broaden their audience is coming out with a global edition of Newsbeat. And the BBC World Service is the kind of more global way of distributing BBC content. Um, they're actually thinking of trialling a global version of Newsbeat. Um, and that's something that they're potentially going to do later on this year. So it'd be interesting to see whether or not that has any success. Radio is regulated by Ofcom, which means that there are some restrictions on what Newsbeat can um, cover and what they can report on. Um, you know, they, they can't be too graphic. They can't be too controversial. They have to think about their kind of, uh, you know, reasonably young audience. So there is a certain amount of control of things that they can and can't say on their radio stations. So that was my very short, simple, easy to understand guide to Newsbeat and industries. Don't forget to check out my channel for other videos that are going to be relevant for you. And if you've got any comments or questions or particular videos you would like, just leave me a comment below and I'll see what I can do.